Yeah, you read that title correctly. Raven is possibly the weakest god release to ever grace Smite. That's not to say he was always weak though. Upon a small rework, he became one of the strongest gods in the game for a time, so let's dive right into this god release history. So, Raven at release had a few abilities that worked a bit differently to present day. Firstly, his old passive was tied to his Prana Onslaught. Basically, every basic attack Raven made stacked up his combo chain up to 8 stacks, and each one increased the damage of Prana Onslaught by 7.5% for 60% total at 8 stacks. And the way that worked out was basically Raven's entire passive was just to make Prana Onslaught do the damage it does currently with no modifiers. So yeah, he basically had no passive, so we're off to a great start with this one. So yeah, the one was basically the same, except it did a little bit less damage at base than it does now, but obviously that was made up for with the passive. Though to be fair to him, he was a warrior back then, and he is now an assassin, so a lower damage output on the one kind of makes some sense. So Raven's 2 right now is super useful to avoid abilities and stuff, right? Well, at release it didn't make you CC immune. Yeah, being damage immune while still being able to move was really useful, but what often happened with Raven at release was that you could immune a good amount of damage, but then just get instantly hit with a stun and die immediately once the damage immunity wore off from the ability. Plus, at release he was designed as a warrior who was meant to be tanky, so having damage immunity wasn't as powerful as it is now with him being an assassin and being built that way. Like when you're full damage, being able to immune a kraken is much more powerful than when you're a tank being able to immune a kraken. And finally, the coup de gras of Raven's shit show release, the ultimate. This might be a bit bold, but this ultimate sucked fucking ass. It was easily the worst ultimate of all time at release, if you're not counting stance changes and stuff like that. So this did 175 base damage and 35% scaling. Yeah, this did probably barely over 200 damage with a full late game build at level 20. I know he was a warrior, but come on. Herc is out here with his 1k damage boulders, and this did one fifth of that. Yeah, no idea why they thought this was a good idea. And then it essentially had a link mechanic where you would leap to a single enemy god, so yes, this was uncastable and 100% useless if you weren't trying to target an enemy god with it, so it couldn't be used to run away or anything. And it would knock all other enemies away from them and make them do 40% reduced damage to you. Yeah, that guy you leapt to because you want to fist them, he's fine. It's all the others that are knocked away and do less damage to you. I get where they were coming from with the theme of this ability, but it really just didn't work. You wanted to leap into a damage dealer and just go on them and drop your kit on them, but then they still deal full damage to you, so you wanted to ult a tank so that the carry you're going on does less damage to you, but now you just burned your only mobility TPing to a tank in the front line and can't get to the back line. It really just didn't work, and it was the main problem with release Raven, along with his passive, of course. Okay, moving on to some buffs and nerfs and things that Raven's had over the years. Wow, look at all that green text. Yeah, this was the same patch he was released, actually. This god was actually so bad that they had to hotfix him before even the first patch after his release. So they changed a whole bunch of stuff in this first patch. Every ability got changed basically since changing the passive is basically changing the one because it was just an extension of his one really. And then his two got his CC immunity, which was a much needed change. Not having that was really frustrating. Like I mentioned, you'd like damage immune to Kraken or something, but then you'd still insta die afterwards because you still got hit by the knock up of the Kraken and things like that. So having this was really useful for him. Oh, and I didn't actually mention this before, but yeah, the heal on the three was based on damage dealt with the ability. And since it did really low damage and he was a warrior with low scalings in general, yeah, he barely got any healing from this, so changing it to a flat value was actually a huge buff. Also, three seconds off the cooldown is really nice. The ultimate actually wasn't changed too much in this first patch. Just got a good bit more damage reduction. 60% on up to four people is super OP, but with the way the ability actually worked, it just made it super hard to use, so it was still very trash at this point. So high res like Rav and Simmer for a few patches before they made any more changes. Patch 2.11 seemed to be the start of moving him towards an assassin playstyle rather than a warrior, even if it was a while until he was actually reworked into an assassin. They bumped up the damage on two of his lower damage abilities by quite a bit, and also lowered the cooldowns a little with some extra healing to boot. Once again, some nice tools, but the lingering problem of Raven's ultimate and passive still made him super awkward to play. So here we are, patch 2.20, Raven's rework. This patch changed a ton of stuff about him and moved him more towards his modern identity in the game. The passive was overhauled to what it is now, giving the health shield instead of being Prana Onslaught 1.5. Speaking of Prana Onslaught, it was mega buff this patch. This really looks like a set of buffs where Hyros were just like, fuck it, who cares if he's OP after this, just get him out of the trash can at all costs. Literally, they buffed almost every aspect of the ability, Base damage, scaling, range, CC, and CC duration. Naturally, this was fucking broken, and we'll see later on that it was nerfed a bit. I get that he was losing the passive benefits to the ability and everything, but this seemed a little bit much. And finally, the big ultimate change. Well, about half of the big ultimate change. Some other changes to his ultimate did come later to make it more what it is today. Look at those damage buffs, man. It looks most impressive because of how utterly trash his damage numbers were before this, but they more than doubled the base damage and nearly tripled the scaling in a single patch. As I mentioned before, it seemed Hyres just really wanted him out of the trash can here. So naturally, some nerfs followed this patch. 
Even with the ultimate still being super weird, the rest of his kit at this point was super good, so the 3, 2 and 1 were all nerfed in coming patches. Mostly cooldown increases, healing nerfs and a small damage nerf on the 1. After these changes, Raven was left alone for quite a while, but in Season 4 the elephant in the room was finally addressed and Raven's ultimate was changed to be what it is now. This was long overdue, but the way they did it made him super broken. So you know how I said that 60% damage reduction will be utterly broken on any other ability that wasn't complete trash? Well yeah, Raven's ult was now super good and gave 50% damage reduction from everything. Not just 4 enemies when he landed on someone, and made any enemies he hit take 10% more damage. So already, even in a 1v1 scenario, that's a 60% damage output swing just from ulting someone. Not to mention it was probably doing upwards of 700 damage alone and could be used to chase, run away, even go over walls. And if you're hitting multiple people with this in a team fight, it just goes fucking ridiculous. Yeah, Raven's ult went from the worst ultimate in the game to probably one of the best and most bloated ones over his lifespan. The sheer amount of stuff this ability did when it was first changed to be like this was absolute insanity. So yeah, numerous nerfs to the ultimate followed this throughout late season 4 and early season 5, hitting most Mostly the damage reduction which went from 50% at all ranks to 10% scaling up to 30% depending on ability rank. No idea how they thought 50% at all ranks would fly in any way, but yeah, they fixed the Roopsie eventually. And the final thing to note in Raven's history up to now would be his assassination. I doubt that's a word, but I'm going to roll with it. So yeah, pretty recently in patch 5.13, Raven was finally reclassified to what everyone played him as really. This mainly meant base stat changes like increased power and speed, but lowered health and defenses for him to fit in better as an assassin. Since really his kit after all the changes was much more befitting of an assassin than a warrior. He also had a couple of small buffs this patch to overhead kick and turn hand shadow fist, along with the extra movement speed on his passive since he was now an assassin. But yeah, that's Raven's release history. It's an interesting story for sure, going from worst god in the game by far to one of the top meta picks and even being top banned for a while, even if it took a couple of years to get him there. If you did enjoy this episode, then be sure to drop a rating and suggest who you want to see the history of next. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, you nerds.